click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Welcome back friends. We are right now in the module number 2 where we are learning design of curve beams. For the reference, we are taking two examples of curve beams. The first one we have done is hook of cranes or crane hooks and the second one we are looking at right now are C-frames. One of the examples of C-frame is a C-clamp that we use in a machine shop that we use for clamping different bodies. So the next problem is based on the design of C-clamp. It's a numerical number 2, it's C-clamp design. We have been given such a problem, we are going to solve the problem. So in this, as you see the problem statement on the screen, we are supposed to find out the dimensions of the C-clamp. Here in the C-clamp dimensions, they have given us the rectangular cross section. So if I take a section along anywhere along this C-clamp body, I'll get the section in this form where this dimension we call it width and this dimension we call it the thickness. So in short, the cross section that we have been given is this width and the thickness. We have been given another relation that the width is actually twice the thickness. So that's the relation we are going to use. Now, we have been given uh, an allowable stress of 100 megapascal for this particular C-clamp or the material that is used for C-clamp and we have been given the maximum load that is going to act on C-clamp. So what is the input and what are the outputs expected? The input parameters are this where we have been given dimensional relation, we have been given the material property and we have been given the applied boundary condition. With respect to this, we need to find out the safe dimensions of this. So the comparison is between the allowable stresses. So we know that in curved beams, curved beams actually fall under the case where they may fail under the influence of bending stresses as well as the direct stresses. C-clamp is a simple case as compared to the crane hooks. So in that case, the bending stresses and the direct stresses are given in the simple format. So the total stress that can act on this, the total stress that can act on this particular C frame can be given by bending stress as well as the direct stress. It's a simple rectangular cross section. So the bending stress will be given by the simple logic which is bending divided by Z and the direct stress will be given by load divided by area of cross section. Whereas the Z is section modulus and it is given by the moment of inertia of the given cross section and the distance of the extreme fiber from the neutral axis. In our case, this is a section and this is how the neutral axis is going to act. Guys, in our case, the neutral axis and centroidal axis for this particular beam is going to be same because it's a simple cross section. It's not like the crane hook. So in this case, this moment of inertia, since the area of or the cross section is rectangular, we will have whereas D is the dimension marked in this direction and B is the dimension that is marked in this dimension or in this map. Therefore, I can say Z is equal to what we have for B is width for D it's T thickness by 12 into the factor 2 goes up the D depth again is in terms of T will say T one factor of T goes off and therefore Z in our case will become 
W T square divided by 6. So this value of Z we are going to replace in this formula. Now we have to find out the maximum bending. As you can see bending moment for any cross section can be given as the maximum load into the perpendicular distance L. As far as the application of P is concerned we have got two values of L 150 and 140. It's a whole body and on two different perpendicular distance forces are acting. Now we know that since the bending moment is directly proportional to the length or the perpendicular distance. So more the distance, more is the distance, more will be the bending moment. Now since bending moment is directly proportional to the maximum stress that it can sustain, we have to consider. So they are directly in proportional maximum bending moment with length and that's why we will go for the maximum length which is possible in our case. And therefore maximum bending moment is given by force which is 25 kilo newton 25 into 10 raised to 3 so friends mb is given by the load 25 kilo newton that is 25 into 10 raised to 3 newton into the maximum length that we know is 150 mm we need not evaluate this factor we will substitute this value directly in our main expression now in our formula now as of now what we have is the value of mb value of z value of p is known and area so we'll directly go for the sigma value so sigma total which may act on the given body is 25 into 10 raised to 3 into 150 the unit of this will be newton mm divided by z the formula of z that we had obtained was this wt square by 6 so it becomes W T square by 6 plus your direct stress so your load is 25 into 10 raised to 3 divided by area of cross section this section itself is a rectangular section so area becomes its width into thickness somehow we have got two unknowns and only one equation what we know so far is W width is twice the T. So we'll substitute value of W in terms of T. Therefore, sigma total value they have already given us the maximum sigma possible value is 100 mega Pascal. So value comes out to be 100 is equal to 25 into 10 raised to 3 into 150 divided by we are replacing W by 2T so it becomes 2t into t square divided by 6 plus 25 into 10 raised to 3 2t t into t therefore I am taking 10 raised to 3 common and I am taking 25 common and taking it down here in the numerator the leftover thing is 2t cube 150 into 6 into 10 raised to 3 plus 10 raised to 3 divided by 2t square. That's an expression where only unknown is small t. When you solve evaluate this particular equation, you get the value of t. So as we evaluate the value of t, we get the value as 38.5 mm. So this is the first factor. Now, like we can say that thickness can be manufactured easily with the round of values. When it's a fraction value, it's little bit difficult or it can be a costly process. So we'll round up this value and we will have the thickness T, which is exactly 39 mm to be used. Now, based on this value, we know that the value of W is twice the T, it becomes 78 mm. Now these are the answers which are required. So with the given conditions initially 
with the given conditions initially, the safe value considering your allowable stress comes out to be 39 mm for the thickness and 70 mm for the width of the cross section. So this was a problem, this was a kind of problem where we had to use the given inputs to find out the dimensions of the given product. In our next lecture, in our next video, we'll be looking at how to select the material and then process the design procedure on that particular material for the C-clamp. If you like this video, please subscribe to eKira. Thank you.